Over 80% of viewers are not subscribed, so be sure to hit that button to support the channel. There are carriers worldwide that are just mainstays, many of which have created a globally recognized brand, which can be covered similar to what I've taken a look at through Emirates and or Qantas, but today movement occurs to the United Kingdom, and now with British Airways. British Airways were founded in 1974, and they're the flag carrier, also the largest airline in the United Kingdom, but really their establishment resulted from the merger of two previously iconic carriers. That was your British Overseas Airways Corporation and British European Airways to consolidate and create a more efficient but also competitive national airline. So while British Airways dates back to 1974, its history does go back much further than that in different forms. The merger marked a true pivotal moment in the history of British aviation and they reshaped it for the future, paving the way for a carrier that would become a significant one in the global aviation space. It was also a merger that had been a long-discussed one, and many were of the belief that it was needed for the United Kingdom to truly thrive. 1992, some few decades later, provided British Airways the chance to expand its operations quite significantly by acquiring Dan Air. Thanks to this acquisition, the presence at Gatwick Airport grew. As we know now, coming into 2024, Gatwick plays a crucial role in British Airways' day-to-day -day operations, alongside that being London Heathrow, their key hub. By the late 1990s, the airline would be one of the founding members of the One World Alliance, which it is still a part of today. Thanks to the One World Alliance, it's forged strong partnerships with companies right around the world to fend off competition and continue offering a pretty robust global service. Interestingly though, the biggest of this competition that I touched on came following the arrival of none other than Virgin Atlantic by Sir Richard Branson, which promised to spice up the UK aviation industry and give British Airways a run for its money, being its competitor. These these two companies, you could argue, still battle it out today with some overlapping networks at different times. However, they've both been able to survive and remain competitive in the space, with customers preferring each for different reasons. British Airways has continuously evolved at the end of the day. It wouldn't be here if it hadn't done so. It's tried its best to stay dynamic in an industry which can change and fluctuate so much over the years. The airline has strategically expanded its route network when required and has looked to connect key cities from its hub worldwide. The fleet has also been something that's transformed, and don't worry, I'll be getting into that very shortly. British Airways has, through the years, adopted modern and fuel-efficient aircraft, which varies significantly from the planes that it used to fly back in the day. Similar to Qantas, this is a company that, while not under the British Airways branding, has been around for a very long time. Therefore, it's truly witnessed all the different ages and eras of travel, whether it is the commercial jet age, prior to the world wars, or something nowadays. It means their fleet has changed drastically, all with a view to enhance operational efficiency at every new era. The fleet at the company now consists of 268 eight in-service aircraft and 18 in storage. This brings the total to 286. Remember, this is at the time of recording. It's therefore very much subject to change. Through the years, as briefly touched on, the airline's fleet has changed quite dramatically as it has advanced. Now, while operating several aircraft types, the argument could be made that it offers a more simplified service. But in comparison to some of your other major long-haul carriers and also flag carriers, they do have more stream lining to do. Key aircraft types such as the 777, 787, A350 and also A380 power its long-haul operations, with the upcoming arrival of Boeing's new 7779, which is set to overhaul the fleet in the coming years too. It means that this space will be pretty crowded. And don't worry, there was a point in time where it was even more crowded, with the retirement of the 747, which in the end left a pretty massive hole in the company. The Queen of the Skies, as it is affectionately known, served British Airways well for many decades, really being pivotal to the carrier's identity. 
However, in a very similar fashion to other airlines, this could include your Qantas and KLM, but not just be limited to them. Retirement, we knew, was always going to be on the cards, but it was sped up significantly due to the effects of the global pandemic and airlines such as British Airways looking to get radical in cutting costs, and therefore the place for a 747 with international travel demand plummeting to zero was simply not there anymore, and it was better off for them to retire the type. British Airways does fly right around the world, reaching as far as Sydney in Australia, which really highlight its expansion efforts. Equally, while their route network is big and fundamental to the success that they have today, notably the One World Alliance and key code share partnerships have allowed the company to thrive on more obscure services that you wouldn't typically find them flying their own aircraft on. This is something we see industry-wide, not just with British Airways, Codeshare, Interline, and many other partnerships that are formed give companies a means to see mutually beneficial decisions made for their overall business. It sees companies coming together to broaden areas that they believe are a weak part of the business and maybe they can't change with their own aircraft. Data indicates that Edinburgh to London or the Edinburgh and London pairing is its most important service when measured by flights. This data is for November 2023 and meant that 645 flights were operated between the two city pairings, or at least offered, which is nearly a 200 flight difference year over year, that representing an increase. In terms of its first route internationally, well that comes through a service between London and Amsterdam. Interestingly, there was a minor reduction in flights between these two important cities year over year. And as expected, if I move away from your European services, the most important route comes next is New York JFK. With two aircraft types serving the London and New York segments, the airline offered 431 services between the two cities in a single month. Looking ahead, British Airways will continue to face pretty firm competition and you'd argue will need to find ways to advance for the greater good. You can't be stuck in, say, the one time period as that is going to be very detrimental to yourself as a business. And also similar to Lufthansa, their onboard product and reputation have really taken a hit in recent times. Something I don't want to cover on a broader scale in this video, but something that still nonetheless needs to get mentioned. Whether this directly stems from potential executive decisions or other external factors, they have made recent investments in their fleet. Whether this concerns obtaining new planes or even just going as far as upgrading the cabin, it's meant that the carrier or group is trying to find ways to limit the damage where possible. But with complaints in terms of other areas of service, maybe even stretching as far as the loyalty program, there is still much for British Airways to work on. But which airline has it perfect? The large the airline, the bigger scope of travellers that are going to be flying on board, and therefore the service will be critiqued even more than usual. But that's British Airways. If you have any thoughts on the company, you can let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions, and feel free to let me know which airline you'd like to see covered next down below in the comments. Thanks for watching, take care, and do also be safe. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you next time. And we'll fly.